Well, hey everybody, it is Friday. I'm actually making this video Friday morning, which typically I have this done before Friday morning, but it's been a busy week. And today's video isn't gonna have an overarching theme. It's gonna be kind of a catch up on all that's going on and where I'm at and a few couple little details. So, here we go, let's see. We'll kick it off with a very bizarre, unusual experience I had this week. I've been doing these exercise walks and hikes around different parts of the city to try to lose weight, recondition my lungs, get to back to full power after COVID last fall, which it lingers for me as far as my lung strength and capacity. And I was on a walk um, from Baker Beach to the Golden Gate Bridge and back. It's a nice uphill walk for a good mile and a real good exercise. And I was on part of the trail that's right beside a guardrail, like on the uh, the hillside side of the guardrail. And then the road that roadway is right beside the guardrail. And I'm walking down and traffic is coming down behind me on my left, you know, the right side of the road not thinking anything of it walking along everything and i don't wear headphones or anything when i'm hiking I, if i'm going to be around traffic and stuff i like to be able to hear what's going on so i cars are passing me and they're passing you close they're just like four feet from you because you're just on the other side of the guardrail on the trail and i'm walking along i hear this snap and then this sting in my side i turn left and it's this white bmw daddy's car i'm sure full of rich white boys Sorry, but that's what they were. Laughing it up, and one of them's got an airsoft rifle. And he just shot me in the side, just for the hell of it, just for fun, for hoots. And, oh man, I was so shocked, and I was so angry in my initial response. I, I literally, and they were going fast, I didn't catch a plate of the car. And I was just shocked, I'm like, how, like, I didn't have a BB gun when I was growing up. My son had BB guns and air, um, airsoft stuff growing up. And he would never shoot at a stranger or something. He and his buddies played, you know, war games with airsoft and stuff. It was shocking to me. And I immediately started thinking about, my gosh, what's going on in their brains? That they can laugh about that and find that entertaining. And what does that step them into? What threshold do they cross by shooting somebody, even though it is just a stupid airsoft, from the side of the road, you know, drive-by style? It's fucked up. And, uh, you know, you can run your brain around a million reasons, like what has influenced them to do this sort of thing? Who knows? But the fact that a whole car full, you know, four guys would be laughing it up and thinking that's great. Pretty sad, but uh, I pretty quickly moved out of the anger because, you know, it was nothing. It didn't really hurt me to a place just feeling really sad about the state of their conditioning, that they would be okay with that and find that entertaining. And I fear that with social media and such, there's a lot of dehumanizing of people going on. And uh, I think long term... I mean, here I operate social media platforms and I, I keep them positive. They're a positive force, I hope, in the world, but it seems overwhelmingly negative a lot of times what's out on social media. And teenagers are so influential, and these guys were like 16, you know, 17 tops. Really sad and had me pondering and pretty woo woo for a little while there. <laughs> so that was a unique experience I had. I never been shot at by someone while I'm walking. That was weird and thankfully it was just an airsoft, but wow, crazy. So, um, kind of to bring you up to speed on where I'm at jackdaw wise financially, a lot of you who follow me consistently and have for at least the last eight months know, or last year know I had breakdown after breakdown after breakdown of mechanical stuff in the rig last year. And, uh, to the tune of, even with me doing all my own work, $5,000 in repairs I made to this truck. I didn't pay a, a, a soul to turn a wrench on it. That was just parts. And it was a tough one. Totally put a big hit in my annual budget 
for this year. And so that's why when I got here, um, after I left Reading, after making my final repairs, got to the Bay Area, typically I'm only here for a couple months to visit my daughter. My son was here, visit him too, and do portraits for agencies, for shelters, then head south and I was going to do San Diego for the first time and then bounce back this way. But my, I did not have the budget to travel because I'd nuked so much of my budget and I'm on a very carefully constructed budget to make it to social security, etc., which I got about three and a half years to go on that. Um, so I decided to just sit tight and stay lean and work in the Bay Area and do as much as I could to further my jackdaw connections here. But more than anything, just really tighten the belt and keep it lean so that I could kind of, well, not burn all that fuel money I would have burned going down south and adventuring around and doing my usual winter thing. And uh, I'm happy to say it worked. Uh, I'm here six months later and instead of spending, you know, a couple thousand dollars on fuel in the last couple months, because, you know, hell is not super economical. I get like a 11 miles per gallon on the highway. Um, yeah, I've kind of bounced back. I'm in a good position now because I've been keeping it, I've been riding transit like crazy. I drive the truck just enough to keep it working well because you can't not drive a vintage vehicle. If you're gonna use it as a daily, you have to be using it on the regular for everything to keep working. So I'm happy to say, yeah, I'm, I'm in an okay position now, as long as everything stays working well, and I believe it will. And uh, so next winter, I should be able to do a couple months here in the Bay Area, then head south and explore shelters in San Diego, and then head east into the desert for a bit and such, and kind of move around more in the winter. So, um, yeah, that kind of worked. It worked. It was it was odd to stay put for so long. That's the longest I've stayed put in a while. Because um, we're talking October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Whoa, seven months by the time I leave. That, I haven't done stayed, in, stayed anywhere that long since launching into this. So I'm kind of, I'm getting excited now to get on the road and get back to moving and grooving and, and getting around. Another new thing that has kind of developed, it's interesting by not being able to, I don't have all the, you know, exciting input of traveling new places and stuff by staying put. And uh, I also, my daughter is a big part of this influence. She's very much into spontaneous photography and stuff. She carries a little toy camera that's digital purely because of the aesthetic of the crappy quality of the toy camera and she loves it and her passion for that being exposed to that for the last several months kind of got me going about wow you know I want to do something very intentional with my photography beyond the blessing I'm doing with the families and so I'm going to start shooting on an old Zenza Bronica that I have a two and a quarter square camera I'm going to start shooting some film again. I'm not, but I'm going to do it in a really different way. I'm going to shoot very intentionally a single frame. Like when something inspires me and it's developing in front of me an, an image, I'm going to craft it. I'm going to compose it to the best of my ability. I'm even going to be guessing my exposure because I don't have a light meter anymore and the camera doesn't have a light meter. So I'm going to be using the Sunny 16 rule. If you know photography, you know what that is and uh, create a single image. I'm gonna potunk, hit that shutter, and then put the camera away. It's gonna be a really intentional, like craftsman style of photography. And just when it, I'm inspired, and you know, it's, it's gonna be fun. So I only get 12 frames to a roll, but they're big, two and a quarter square frames, and I'll get it processed and scanned. And I've started a, start an Instagram page for that called Zenza Wolf. And when I start posting to it, then I'll kind of promote a little more just to share that imagery. But I'm excited about that because it'll be this, you know, artistic expression that after the 30 years as a commercial photographer and, you know, applying that artistic capability to selling stuff, when I took off on Jackdaw, I didn't want to ever work for advertising ever again. I still don't. But I also kind of went on hiatus from, ah, I'm not even shooting anything but family portraits. 
and uh, you know stuff I do for Instagram on my phone and also now it's kind of coming around where I have an, um, a desire to create um, something analog on film that's super intentional and, and costs you in this case you know with film processing and scanning film cost me like two bucks every time I hit that shutter so I'm kind of excited about that and uh, I'll be shooting all black and white so yeah you have that to look forward if you follow me uh, it could be months before I finish this first roll of 12 exposures and that's kind of the fun idea of it um, so looking forward to sharing that with you and I'm looking forward to exploring getting back into an analog process and lastly, I want to give a huge heartfelt thank you to my patrons, you know, on Patreon and some that are regular monthly patrons um, directly through PayPal. You guys are keeping me alive. I, I couldn't do this without you. And I really appreciate your patience while I've been struggling to get in with shelters here in the Bay Area. I am in with an agency and I shoot for them. Um, I've done a lot of listening, the listening that I do to kind of fill in time when I haven't been able to shoot for shelters, so I've continued that that gifting work. Um, but you know, your support has kept me alive and kept me in the gig, and it means everything to me. I love you guys for that. I'm so grateful for you. And uh, when I get to Seattle, I'll be, I've got like 10 different shelters I shoot for there, so it's gonna be real busy in Seattle which will be great and I'm looking forward to that um, I don't know why I was able to well I just it was it's a different place and, and they uh, just welcomed it pretty quickly once I got my foot in the door at a couple of shelters then boom I was shooting in Seattle <laughs> so um, I'll continue that work here when I come back this way I'll be going to San Diego next winter and I'm developing new ways to uh, do portraits for families through uh, cultural centers and stuff too so it's continuing to develop and again I just want to thank you for your faithful support um, I'm doing the work just sometimes it's uh, it's not as glamorous or shows up the same way as on the shoot days and I uh, wanted to thank you for hanging in there with me very much so that's the catch-up for today I'm only gonna be in uh, the Bay Area for a little over two weeks now um, then I'll be heading to Reading for about three weeks at my dad's gonna work on some projects on the rig there gonna work on doing some upgrades to my daughter's van's interior and uh, just uh, hanging out with my dad and, and Kathy and shooting some pool I'm sure helping them out with anything I can help them out with then I roll on north to my sisters in Olympia Washington for a couple weeks should be hitting the ground running in Seattle at the first of June so I'll be traveling kinda sorta soon and uh, so it's making my, my last uh, days, last couple weeks here in the Bay Area. I'm soaking up the ocean big time because uh, I won't see the real ocean again until I come back this way in the fall. But that's great. I've got lots of family and friends to see along the way as I head north and in Seattle. And I'm looking forward to all those times and all that visiting. And uh, it's going to be great. So anyway... That's your little Friday catch-all. There you go. You're up to speed. Hope you have a great weekend.